I must say, you probably think I am not the fan of your records that I am. You know, because... That's a bit of a surprise. Well, when you became a singer... Wait, back up. Back up. Do, do you remember... Do you, do you realize I was... I, my first TV show was Politically Incorrect that I ever I, did. I What? Really? That was the first TV show I ever did. Someone talked you on to have me early in my career. So I don't mid, know if you recall. It was either that night or the night 90s. after. Late 90s. Have to be late 90s. Late 90s? Yeah. When was your first album? My first successful album. Well, 1989, but my first successful album. What I'm talking about was 1998. Double Without a Cause. Oh, so I have that. It was right around oh, then. Yeah. But, but it was either that night or night after. We ended up going to see Bill Clinton. We had dinner with Gregory Peck. Went out to my limo. We smoked a joint. Who's we? Me and you. <laughs> Stoner. <laughs> really? Yeah. We did? We went out to my limo. Wait a Smoked second. a joint. We came back and we had this little dinner with this private thing. He, Bill Clinton was doing a thing because they pr printed a picture of me and Rolling Stone with him and it was a little uproar because it didn't get cleared by the White House. I was like doing something like this. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I'd be so disappointed if you weren't. Right. I'm surprised it wasn't this. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that was last night. I, I, it's a boy. The memory is a funny thing, is it not? The way like some things that are so trivial stick in your mind, and then like you'd think I'd remember Bill Clinton. Kid I trust Rock. me, rock and roll is not. Greg, did you say Gregory Peck? Gregory Peck was at dinner with us. <laughs> Gregory Peck? Yes, some other hippie singer girl. Because we were in a little private room. Gregory Peck. Yeah. With us. Yep. And did the three of us ever go out again after that? No. <laughs> of course I haven't seen, I'm haven't seen you since. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, I just, uh, like, your last record is fantastic. Thank you. And you really know how to, like, make a record. I feel like. But. Uh, writing a record is the hard part. I'll bet. Getting in the studio, it's just, you know, what you do after so many years you fine tune your craft you put in the time and work but writing is you know sometimes it comes sometimes you know you write jokes you write you're a writer i imagine you have a, a team of people that help a little of course <laughs> <laughs> now not so much with stand-up but yes the show yes of course i've you know they're brilliant i i <laughs> i love them um by the way i'm a big fan of your show really religiously Good. watch it okay well, see, we, well, you know where my politics we, lie, obviously, and I know where yours lie, but I don't, and I think, you know, and I found you to be pretty well, rational on a lot of things, you know, but, but more importantly is, is, well, my, I always like to get both sides, at least it's pretty hard in this day and age because it's all opinions. I at least like to get some people who look like they well, have a conviction. They, I, they, uh, you know, things have changed so much on the left in the last five to seven years that. People have said things I say to me often, you know, you're more conservative. I'm not more conservative. They're just crazier on the far left. And I am a comedian. I am not going to pull any punches on who's acting ridiculous. When they act ridiculous, I call them on it, and they do a lot. And that's probably why you enjoy my show. No, no, I enjoyed it even when I couldn't stand you. Like, I was like, this <laughs> motherfucker, when you just beat the out of my guy Trump and that, and I'm like, but I still wanted to get right. both sides, and I, and I do think you're well, a funny guy. I love, you know, but, and I, the end, you know, when you go to... Um, yes. Um, yeah. I, new rules. Yes. You know, it's always great and poignant. Even if I don't like it, I'm like, well, that's the right. guy. I don't like anybody. That's their truth. They're well, speaking what their truth is. Even yes. if I disagree with it, that's, that's all right. Right. No, I, I've heard you say that in your lyrics. I must tell you, I do love Bad Reputation. Thank you. That's one of my favorites on there. I mean, the whole album. Oh, the whole album. That's one of my favorites. Except. <laughs> we the people? Yes. <laughs> the part where you're chanting, let's go, Brandon. I'm not chanting that. Okay, but it's on your record. And I, <laughs> and I feel like it's, I feel it really undercuts and belies your message, which I think crosses with my message a lot, that we have to talk to, I'm always saying this, I'm like, we have to talk well, to each other. We can't go into these bubbles. Yes. We, we, even if you disagree with somebody. Well, let me, let me tell you how optimistic I've been feeling this week. And was, you know, I've, I don't know if you know this about me, I rarely do interviews these days. I know, and all. I appreciate it more than I can tell you. And... And, you know, I did Tucker Carlson, obviously, and that's all I did for this album. I f with some people on social media, stir the pot. 
I did his show, and this is my most successful tour. Attendance, grosses, merchandise really? to date, yes. That's amazing. Which people, you know, were very scared, you know, my booking agents here. Some people will tell you, you know, like, those politics, man, they're going to fuck you up your business. I'm like, I don't give a shit, man. I've saved my money. I'm like, I can speak openly, you know, blah, blah, blah. But That's your brand. So, so, last, so I said at the beginning of this, I did this little thing for the Devil's Tool social media where I taped something about the album tour. And I said, I know I'm polarized and I'm, I'm speaking my fucking mind. And I know I speak for a lot of people who can't, who are scared to lose their jobs, this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. You know all that. And I said, but after this, I said, you know, one of my, one of the people I look up to so much in life, uh, one of my musical heroes, friends, Reverend Run from Run DMC, told me one time, he said, you know what you do best? You bring people together. And I said, after this tour, I want to get back to that because this country needs it. And it just so happens, the last two shows are this weekend coming up here in Nevada. And last night I go to dinner with um, Randy Gerber, Cindy Crawford, my old friends. And my friends send me these links to TMZ this morning. I'm like, oh shit, I'm on TMZ again. Who the fuck did I piss off now? Whose panties did I get in a bunch? And it was actually a nice piece. It said, it said, you know, Cindy is a registered Democrat. Wow. Randy's an independent. You know, they're best friends with George Clooney and Amal. You know where they lie. And we're all friends. And it just basically said like, Hey, right. you can all be friends. It's well, still different. I'm like, and then I'm coming here. I'm going, we need to get back to this point. I, well, of course. Now, here's the backstory to that. TMZ is run by Harvey Levin. Become such a good friend of mine. He's such a great guy. And that show is never mean, really, to celebrities. They love celebrities. They follow them. But, I mean, they like more the negative than positive. No, no, no. But if you don't play the game with them, we know that a lot of people are in bed. No, them. no, no. Maybe that's how they used to be. That's not what that show is now. It's not. It's very positive. But... <laughs> Harvey and I agree completely on almost everything political. And this message that I have been... He shows my shit all the time because he wants people to see, you know, this so message. So is Fox News, by the way. Yes, but this message particularly, he and I would agree on, which is the thing we're saying here now. We have to talk to each other. We can be friends. Oh. And, and you can know somebody is a Trumper or whatever, I keep saying it. You I've heard you hate, say it a million you times. You can hate him. You can't hate everybody who likes him. Exactly. Like, I will never understand why you like this whiny little bitch. He's, you know, you're such a real man, and he's such a little bitch. He's always... But bitch. when you're bashing him, that's what I say. I go, I can't believe I know, I'm watching know, this I, whiny little bitch. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I was jumping through the TV and fucking smack one on Bill Maher, man. Fucking... Because, you know, you get know. to walk that fine line as a comedian, like Jon Stewart, and so many people where you get to interject your politics into the comedy, which is, you know, a very blurred line, which I love, which is fun. I think everybody should be able to do it at any level. Say any fucking word you want. And I've heard you say it, and I agree, and I've been saying it for years. Fucking context matters. You have a record, I don't know what one it is on, but, like, it's called I'm a Low Life. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> 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 That's Keeping on brand, Bill. <laughs> Very funny. See, that, I have to say, like, there's not a lot of musicians who, where the record is, I mean, there's people who are funny, but that, that's their thing. Weird Al Yankovic is funny, but it's not, you don't listen to it for the music. But, like, the people who are, like, really funny and the music is good, I mean, Eminem, mm -hmm. uh, I would, Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh, yeah. Is funny and the music is good. I, I, I mean, I'm kind of stumped to keep going, that list going. It's, it's hard. I bet we could keep going on it. Like, name some more people who, like, are actually funny. You know I mean, who's somebody... the opposite, who's really funny, and whose music, when she interjects it, is pretty dang good, is LaWanda Page. Who's that? Sanford's son. Oh. I'm going to stick your face in some dough, make a real cookies. Remember her? LaWanda no. Page and Esther. What and Sanford's son. What does that have to do with... A lot with... of rappers scratch her, like, Two Live Crew, they use her oh. shit and hip-hop That's different songs. than actually writing It is, song. but it was the opposite spectrum. Well, like, she's a comedian who also <laughs> did a little bit of music, and the music's not bad when she starts doing her comedy over it. Oh, what's the guy? Just, um, Pig, Pig, Pigman, uh... God, I just... I gave him a phone. No, away. but you... It was one of the first rap tunes, but he was a comedian that did... The, uh, that song is funny, uh, the low life one about same songwriter with me by the way same guy John Eddie that wrote those with me. Is that the one where you're like uh, the landlord came for the rent? Yeah, the I, rent is due. I spent it all on a kiss tattoo. tattoo. <laughs> I take strippers out to breakfast. You can add that to my checklist. I'm a low life. <laughs> right, and there's something and I'm fucking your wife or mm -hmm. I'm going out with your it's wife. So <laughs> it's like anyone who doesn't laugh at that 
is an asshole. <laughs> That's the problem, right? There's too many like stick up their ass. I mean, that's pretentious, that is, right? I mean, look, I'm not gonna lie. Like sometimes you remind me of my dog Chico because you just like like you love Chico. I do love Chico, <laughs> but Chico will bark at nothing. Like he will walk into the driveway. Like I understand a dog barking when there is something to bark at, but he'll just walk out there and be like, "Ruff, ruff!" Like anybody starting some shit up, you're gonna get you be sorry because I'm Chico and I'm here. And I feel like they, like your your records start like that. <laughs> I'm gonna do what I want, and don't anybody tell me what not to do. And fuck you, and kiss my ass. I'm like, who's attacking you, Bob? Unfortunately, <laughs> it's crossed over into real life a few times, which <laughs> I've really tried to get but, beyond I mean, that at 51 years old. <laughs> that's a funny song. Yeah, I agree. It's great. That's you know, a my very, fans love it. The, the 50 feel song. Part. Oh, the 50 song is funny. Yeah. That there's... also because it's you know it just shows that you can be self-deprecating. Absolutely. You know, you admit you're you're like I'm going bald, <laughs> yeah. and I shit my pants right here, baby. <laughs> you know, and the, the strippers used to kiss me, and now it costs That's twenty. Money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, take it from a comedian. I like to say it's like, not true, but some of the best comments well, are true. I mean, but you got to own. You got to own your your age. You you can't. Uh, you that's a very smart thing to do. Well, I have a funny story when I first like, realized I was old. Strippers on the bus, toys are. There's this. Well, it's uh, I, something, yeah, something about my granddaughter. I used to. Yeah. Right. Something. You have a granddaughter. I just had a grandson. I got two grandkids now. Oh my god. And what do they think of you? Well, seven years old, old enough where she's been to some shows and really? she she kind of wants to be famous, which I'm like. Slow down, honey. You right. want to be rich. I, I've been saying for years, tell me if you agree with any of this. I, I think the biggest disease on the face of this earth at our current time is fame. Well, you are not the first person to uh, posit that opinion. Yes. I mean, fame can be the worst drug. When you, yeah. when you see people on like who were celebrities or they were formal, you know, like they went down the celebrity. Aquamom? Or was it Octomom? Well, Octomom <laughs> is a little different. Octomom was only ever famous for having eight children at once. Those pictures of her are beyond. Anyway, but like I'm talking about somebody who was a celebrity, but now the the calls aren't coming in. So they go on some sort of like reality. Yeah, it's sick. right. Instead of just retiring and saying, okay, I was on a sitcom for five years, it was good. It's not happening. No, I'll eat bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to stay in front of the camera. I think that's what you're talking about. Well, it's right? just, well, I, also, I see what's going on with our kids and this, that, and the other. Oh. And you see, you know, what examples are being set out there in social media. What, I mean, I can't imagine navigating that as a kid. And everybody no. wants, well, not everybody. There's a big percentage of kids, people that want some notoriety, fame. They want to be somebody. Of course, I did too. But now there's ways to go about it. Like, We'll just cut your dick off. Like, I, you know, you're gonna I, fucking, hey, look at me, I'm different. You, you'd like my latest stand up special. There's a lot of stuff in there on this theme. Really? Yeah. You check it out. Oh, by the way, I got you a gift. Well, I think you're gonna really? like this. A gift? What? I see you already got some good ones. I didn't I like know about gifts. them, but. Oh. <gasps> oh, oh, oh my God, I love it. <laughs> said, my pillow. They said guy. it might be on camera. Here, that but... is so awesome. <laughs> that the best oh my god to his credits when they fucking fbi went after him i was like you know what i'm gonna buy some of this guy's shit you know what i have clinton i, I and see I have trump trump I see clinton uh i got that one i don't know how i, I got, got a bob ross too i don't know how i got either one of them but that's true of so many things in this room i just don't i can't remember yeah, but, i just moved one of my homes and finding shit in a level of excess that's kind of embarrassing what? Of just having so much shit. And, but finding cool shit, too, that you never, oh. that you forgot that you might have had, or gifts at some I have, I have the Chicago coin box, oh, by the way, right possessions? there. possessions? I have that Chicago coin box. Uh, where the, You know you're, you don't have that hooked up correctly. That goes with a jukebox. Oh. You put a jukebox under it, and you, you string them together, so when you put a quarter in the jukebox, the curtain the opens. the same one? Yes, the band starts playing. I collect right. all I can, I can make the band play, but okay. it's not hooked up to a jukebox. Right, right. that's what it was made for, for a jukebox. So you mean you have too many things? 
it's just level of excess, you know. I was like, well, bring my motorcycles down. Right. And I was like, I probably got, you know, six or seven motorcycles. I was like, oh, you have 17. You know, the level of clothes that I gave with shoes, and, you know, I donate them or I give them to neighbors, things like this or whatever. It's just, and a lot of it's stuff people give you is the point. I yeah. was making her some great gifts people give you. Absolutely. For two years, you'd, no. you'd be like, who gave me the My Pillow? Oh, no, I'll know, remember. I no, <laughs> no, I'll remember that forever. That's, a, that's an amazing piece. I've always wanted a crack addict up here, but uh, <laughs> successful crack addict. A very successful. By crack the way, addict. his fucking sheets are not. I'm a fucking stickler on towels. Yeah. Good bedding, shit like that. And I was like, eh, when the FBI raided him, I'm like, I'm gonna order some of his shit. Slippers were pretty decent, but the sheets are not bad. And I'm kind of a fucking spoiled little fucking when it comes to like good sheets and Whenever towels. Whenever I, I can't get to sleep, I always blame the pillow. Hmm. And then the next day when I get to sleep, it's like, oh, what happened to the pillow problem? So I don't think it's the pillow. But you know what? Uh, I'm not going to um, quibble about Trump. Yeah, we could we could do the whole hour on it's Trump. Stupid. But why? It's, you don't like him, but, I do. But, Let's move on. Exactly. I, I don't, by the way, I don't like Donald Trump. I've been saying... I fucking love Donald Trump. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, because I've been saying on the show... That uh, no. what you hear a lot from people who are Trumpers. I don't is like him. I like the, his policy. The biggest misconception, right, is that I like him. But yeah, I agree. I. But it's also kind the, of funny the, too, where you hear these arguments, and you could make a million of them, and I could too, and we could do the whole, you know, show on that. But it's like one I a funny right, one I thought just, of on the way over here. No. Just let me finish this. One I thought on the way over here was like, okay, you want me to be acceptive accepting like and whatever of like a dude dressing up like a girl wanting to use the girl's right. bathroom cutting his dick off this right. that and the other but you got a problem <laughs> which has not proven to be true but you got a problem with a guy who might have pissed on a hooker in russia right <laughs> like come on well man. i mean bob come on that's anecdotal but look i don't want to again we could talk about this you don't want to and i don't want to so let's try to uh since we uh have no dissenting votes on this issue, agree that what heals America more than anything is two people who have the acumen to figure out what they are not going to convince the other of or agree on, and so leave it alone. Right? Absolutely. That's the well, whole thing. I would say amen. Okay. <laughs> are you religious? I am a little religious, yes. Oh. I mean, you do mention God, and you said, no, I mean, you have a, a album. To I have a relationship rock and with roll. God, I believe. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> I lit a candle last night for uh, Loretta Lynn, oh. my dear friend who just passed. What a wonderful oh, really? American! A dear friend. I, we got married in a mock wedding. I thought that was Pam Anderson. We got married four <laughs> times because I've always said I think you will agree. Getting married is a blast. I don't. Have you ever been married? No. Right, okay, getting married is a fucking ball. <laughs> I did, it was so fun, I did it four times. South of France, but, Beverly Hills, Nashville. Being married sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, you gotta give me a little props on that, <laughs> I that I was able to. But what I always loved about you, I must say, even when I didn't like your politics, was that you acted like every guy, like every average guy, if they became a rock star, would act without apology, you know, and, and also without, like, like, so many times you see celebrities do these, what I think is, like, really um, self-sabotaging kind of behavior where, like, like wow, you're young and, you're, and every girl wants you and you get married. <laughs> you know, it's just dumb. And you, like... I didn't have that problem. <laughs> no. <laughs> you were like, no. And if I do get married, I'm going to marry the girl that every guy wants to fuck more than anybody else. I wanted to ride the Ferris wheel, man. Everybody wants to ride the Ferris wheel. <laughs> <laughs> but were you really in love with her when yeah, you? Yeah. Totally. Oh, you were. Yeah. Really. Yep. So it was real. Oh yeah, I'm from fucking Romeo, Michigan. Sure, I got to you know at that point I'd seen a little more of the world, you know, and it wasn't like I was sheltered. I was raised very middle upper class, like you know, great family, this, that, and the other. So it wasn't like I was you know some sheltered kid, this, that, and the other. But you know, yeah, I went into I thought, it how I was raised. My parents were still together after fifty some years of marriage. Like you know, I was. It was, yeah. but, but you, but you have that. If we're not going to talk about Trump, we're not going to dive down but this you Pam, have that, but, Pam rabbit hole either. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. But, but uh, you have that song that, that, like, I thought you left home when you were 15 or something. Oh, I did. And then. I did. 
See, and I went. Know, you, you, and I went to the, the only place I could go and stay was with my friends in the hood. For such, I couldn't time. go stay with my middle class friends. They're like, "No, I'm taking you home to your parents." My friends in the hood were like, "You can crash here." For such a badass, so many of your songs are actually very uh, romantic and and sentimental. I mean, they're really heart tugging. That one, that one, where the, the, the chick with the jeans and the rosary, blue jeans and a rosary. My guitar player wrote that, Marlon. That is a very uh, requested a lot by the by the females. I'm sure it is, you know, as I'm sure the Cheryl Crow ones are, mm -hmm. you know. And there's another person. I wrote that. Which one? Collide? Picture. I wrote Collide too. Well, okay. with my guitar player, I wrote Collide, but I wrote Picture. That was one of the few no. songs I wrote by my. You know, a lot of times you. I'm I'm not somebody that likes to be alone and write. I do. But I like to get together and finish with somebody. I'm a people person. I like I like people around. It's always better to have a partner. Yeah, it like, just gets lonely. Lennon and McCartney. You need yeah. somebody who can say to you, oh, "I think we can do better there." But I must say, you you have a way of uh, evoking like a nostalgia for like when life was. Those are my favorite songs. I Me too. I mean, you know, like. Little things, you know. The, the Eagles one, were so great which, at it. One of the best. Well, you know what? It's funny you mentioned the Eagles because, like, I, I think of you as, I know you're from Detroit, mm -hmm. but then you, like, have this big, giant boner for the South. Huge. <laughs> huge, huge, huge boner, Bill. It's a tremendous boner. It's huge. I love the South. And okay, but it, but it reminds so, me of the Midwest so, but too. But like that, again, not to keep harping on this theme, but like that's when we're best when the two parts of the country who you wouldn't think get along get along. And what other giant band, one of the greatest of all time, is also a product of Detroit and the South? Well, they all are. No. Well, everybody came specifically. To rock the, rock band, the Eagles. Glenn Fry is from Detroit. Glenn Fry went to school with with Bob Seger. Okay, with Punch right. Andrews, my former okay. manager. He's, he's from De he's from Detroit. Yes. and well, Don aware. and Don I'm, Henley. Mm -hmm. Is Don Henley's from Texas? Is Texas? Yeah. That combination is what I'm saying. Oh, absolutely. Works. It works. You know. But you know, all that happened from Chicago to Detroit was when you know the Industrial Revolution when. You know, the plants, Henry Ford did all that. Everybody came from the South, and they some stopped in Chicago. That's where we got the blue, birth, of, you know, the real blues scene going on. And then the rest came to Detroit, you know, which we got Motown, all that great John Lee Hooker soul music, all that stuff. It was all Southern. Oh, it's roots, which is all, you really want to go back and you start getting into country. It's Celtic, it's this, blah, blah, blah. You could trace everything back to as far as... Celtic? Yeah. What? <laughs> I did a Celtic hip-hop song on, this, on Bad Reputation. I'm Celtic. Really? Bar? Mar is a very I'm Jewish. <laughs> By the way, I lit the candle last night because my friend was saying it was Jewish. He said he's going to light one for his dad for Yom Kippur. Oh, yeah. I don't right. know shit about that, but I was like, that right. sounds like a cool thing. So I lit one, said a little prayer. Oh. I felt good. Well, made me feel good. Congratulations. Makes you feel good. Fuck. Welcome to Judaism, Bob. <laughs> I'm the, I'm the oh, Roma. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. We're full. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I miss it. <laughs> Uh, sorry, you can't no, come in here with a I hat. Mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that kind of yeah. hat. We are brought to you by SignalWire, the real OGs of software-defined telecom. Have you seen this new horror movie where an abducted teenager receives calls on a broken phone from the murder victims of his deranged captor? Hard to believe because everyone knows kids don't do voice calls anymore. But if you're developing a product or app that features real-time communications like voice or video, and who isn't, SignalWire can help make sure your user experience doesn't turn into a scary movie. Whether it's voice, messaging, or cutting-edge broadcast quality video, if it has to do with real-time communications, SignalWire has the APIs, which is a great pickup line if you're at a happy hour at a tech conference. Hey baby, want to come back to my room and check out my APIs? With SignalWire, you can completely customize the user experience and integrate with an existing application or website with ease. SignalWire's ultra-low latency is essential for creating experiences where real-time really matters. Whether you're a developer, product builder, or just someone with a cool idea, SignalWire offers APIs, SDKs, and even copy-and-paste code snippets to help you make your vision a reality fast. 
Get cutting edge video, voice, and messaging from the original geeks of Software Defined Telecom. Visit signalwire.com slash random to sign up for a free account. Go to signalwire.com slash random and build what's next in real time communications. Go to signalwire.com slash random. Did you know there are currently over 2.4 million podcasts in the world, including the one you're listening to right now? And it takes a team of people to help bring these podcasts together. The people on my team are invaluable, from the guy whose job it is to find Woody Harrelson's shoes, to the woman who made sure Chevy Chase's driver didn't get lost, to the guy in the back who is recording this right now while high as a kite. These employees at Club Random get shit done. Needless to say, hiring the right people for these roles is important. And whether you're hiring for a podcast or for your growing business, there's only one place that makes it easy, ZipRecruiter. And now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash random. ZipRecruiter uses its powerful technology to find and match the right candidates with your job. You can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply. Additionally, ZipRecruiter has a complete suite of tools that make it easy to filter, review, and rate your candidates. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. So if you're a fan of this podcast and you want to try ZipRecruiter for free today, you need to remember our special URL, ZipRecruiter.com slash random. Once again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash random. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Hi, it's me, Bill, the guy from the podcast you're currently watching. Just want to let you know that I will be performing at the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden in New York, November 12th. Go to NewYorkComedyFestival.com for tickets. That's NYComedyFestival.com for tickets. But let me let me see. Yeah, what you take got. a hit on that one. Go Is ahead. this like wheelchair weed? It's wheelchair. You know, after you're. <laughs> Pretty smooth. Yes. I don't really smoke. My brother smokes a lot. Okay. Well, it has fence and all. He doesn't. Anyway, have, he doesn't have a job either. Who? My brother. Who's your brother? Billy Ritchie. Oh. Well, what if he doesn't have a job? He smokes weed. He doesn't have a job. Oh. Now I'm going to cough. <laughs> does, that, does that bother you? What's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because he's, he's super smart. He's like uh, college educated, a history buff. Well, you know, it's hard. He's got one leg, which was a little tough to deal with that he lost when he was very young. Seven years old. We were riding on a tractor. He fell off. Got brush hog this, so it's but really? but still, it's like he can fucking ski with poles. He played football. He could do everything. Like he's so smart. So well, look, sounds like this guy's having a really rough time. So I'm not the kind who wants to pile on and make it worse. But <laughs> Oscar Pistorius, okay, so yeah, you know, so he could be a track star. Yeah, I don't. He him. just doesn't so, want. He likes weed. Remember Oscar Pistori? <laughs> oh, yeah. Didn't he have some trouble in Af South some Africa? Some trouble. He shot, his, <laughs> he shot his girlfriend in the bathroom. Oscar and, Pistori, how's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a good question. Where are they now? I don't know, but uh, that was brutal. Yeah, that was... Shoot, I mean... There's a lot of brutal shit, man. God. Well, I was... Uh, I have Trace Atkins on my show. Love Trace. Old friend. He uh, sang on some of my records with me. Really? Yeah. He did a really low vocal on um, "Love Him." Rock Bottom Blues, the record I did with uh, Rick Rubin years ago. You can oh. hardly hear him, but he's the guy going. Oh, Born Free? No, no. Uh, yeah, that album. The song's on that. Album. That's a great album. He's so low in there. All you hear is da oh, da da da. But again, you're you're so chico. Like I'm born free. It's like <laughs> that's what we know. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what I love you to got, do, yeah, right? It's like I know the this. people that love. No one likes Kid Rock. I think we can agree. They either what? love, either love him or you fucking hate him. People like Dave Grohl. Ah, Dave. Ah, you know, they were fucking. Wow. I, I'm not in the middle. So, so what I do, like, I actually brought my hat just to piss people off, like that don't like me. It's like you know, just sitting here with my fucking Kid Rock hat on. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, you're already because Kid Rock. What do you, what right, do you, but the people that don't... Talk about a hat on a hat. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I just like to yeah. fuck with people that don't like me. I'd wear this hat. Well, try it on. Well, not now, but I mean, we're inside. But I would wear this. To like a... Anywhere. To, to a PETA to event? To any fucking to a place I event? want. You know what? Will you wear it to a PETA event? Why? Are you? Well, I just well, think it'd be great. I used to go, I went to no, some PETA I events, no. which I don't agree with at all. I was friends with Dan Matthews I, I and shit. I certainly wouldn't 
wear it to a PETA event. And actually, there's a PETA event coming up, and I won't be wearing this. That would just be unnecessarily uh, provocative I to, a, to, my, an, to an organization that I adore. I could give you my full-length mink to go with it. And, you know, let's not get on that subject either. <laughs> the fact that I can forgive Trying you— to start your engine. <laughs> the fact that I can forgive you about murdering animals in the woods, what a great hobby. We eat them. Uh, it's is, conservation. Is, is we way, can talk about that. It's can, way more than the Trump thing. Well, I can give you and, some ins insight on that about conservation and how— I ended, I've heard, I heard it all. Okay. You know, so, some of it is just— you're right. There's always a, a a lot of other truth on the other side that doesn't get heard in our bubbles. But in general, it it's also, for whatever reason, like I've never had kids. I don't like kids. I love animals. So emotionally, I'll admit that. It just, I don't it just, like kids. You, I ass, I you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well, Who says, I, there's I, some I, things you might not want to be so oh, honest no. about. I, and I really hate babies. Uh, oh, I mean, fuck. kids I can sort of deal with a little for a few minutes, but, well, pr people raise their kids wrong, you know. I mean, I would be a very bad parent right now because I would fight. Uh, we would be very aligned on this, I think, on, in uh, a lot of this. I would be a very bad parent because they would be doing things in the school that I didn't think was appropriate. Just, and, and not from either side or point of view, just like the subject itself. They're five. Can we just do blocks and the sky is blue before we get to drag queens? You know, it's like Bill. There's levels of sophistication. These that are just Bill. Bill, welcome to the Republican Party. You know, I. I, I, I <laughs> first of all, you must not watch my show because I watch your show every week. Well, because I have I, the quote I've been, from the I, Iranian lady I this week that I thought was spot well, on about I, the headdress. Okay. But I talk about the, I've been talking about this stuff for years. This I am not. You have to welcome me. And by the way, I don't want to be in the Republican Party Come on. at all. Oh, I don't. I can, See, I can make it. some calls. Okay, that's the difference. Oh, I know the invite is there. I don't want it. Pick another kid for your team. Okay, uh, and I can tell you why. But again, let's not get to the places where let's go. You know, I first we can of all, have some fun with I it. I can't. Though. I can't. We can have some enjoy fun fighting with, with somebody who is such a good entertainer. I mean, this world is, yes, full of right and wrong and blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, you know, if you're not religious, which I'm not, it's all about killing time until you die. Be as good a person as you can. And I agree. And kill time until you die. I agree. Okay, so, you know, killing time involves all the things that are just fun. You know, Golf. You, well, I hate golf. But, I know, but it kills time. But, like... If I died, I would really miss my music collection. Yeah. Oh, you know? I don't think you're the only one in that, in that space. Yeah. I mean... That'd probably be like, like top five so in Family Feud. Anybody who's entertained me, you know, and a song, I mean, songs are unbelievable because unlike comedy, which is very perishable, they're just good forever. You know, picture is good forever. forever. I'm a comedy groupie. I'm a fucking comedy groupie. I hang out at Zany's in Nashville. I'm like backstage. You, so you know? live in Nashville? Yeah. Oh, that's a funny song. Where you shit on Nashville? Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't write that. Kid Ward Gunther wrote that. I, I did write funny. some to it, but he kind of had that line. And everyone's scared There's in Nashville There's a line to out the door that. of underage whores. whores. And the bouncer great, just lets them all what by. What a great way to start a song. <laughs> right. That is, who is that? Who wrote that? It's a kid named War Gunther. He, brought, he a, does a thing in Nashville called Whiskey Jam, which is hugely popular. All the I, big why stars. Why did I think you live in Alabama? I, I, I have a farm in Alabama, a hunting I, farm. I remember seeing an article, you know, a, a spread on you in some, you know, phony baloney magazine or something about your life, and you know, probably Rolling Stone. They covered me down there like years that. ago. Yeah, so I'm in Florida, Alabama, Michigan in the summer in Nashville. Jesus Christ! Just right up and down. Nothing in Just California. Just follow the sun. No, I'm I'm the only idiot that ever lost money on a house in Malibu. What do you mean? I sold my house in oh. Malibu. This shit show house that. But why did you have Malibu house? She was it? hot. <laughs> really? Is that is that really the truth? Yeah. <laughs> I gotta have this house. It's so awesome. My goods. Like, what See, is it? Twelve million I, dollars. Let's buy it. That's what I mean. You you don't like put on airs you know you act like the guy every guy dreams of having what is available to a rock star and then you're like well yeah if you're going to if i'm going to be given these privileges i'm going to use them if you're going to be a bear be a grizzly yeah i agree yeah 
you know, the whole key I, that I'm most proud of there is, is I, I, I don't feel, you know, there's always sometimes where someone's hurt, maybe did something wrong, but I, I've never mistreated people. You get away with murder if you're just fucking nice about it. You know, when you're younger and you're in this fucking crazy world of drugs and booze no, and women I mean, and all this stuff, you're like, just don't be a fucking, the, no, just don't be I a mean, dickhead. You, you, well, you are a dickhead, but you, but when you are, I applaud you because you're, you're, you're trolling people who deserve to be trolled. You are twisting the tail of the oversensitive. You're oh, saying, uh, yes, I do that well. And I, I do do that. And I, that's when I love you the most. It's like, even if I don't agree with your political point of view, it's like, but you, you oversensitive assholes who can't take a joke, right. who don't understand what you, nuance, that whole thing, yep. context, and just like, you know, just laugh at life. How, how did that generation that came after us become such stick up their ass? You know, because of timeouts and participation Yeah, trophies. but like, it should be that the older people have the stick up their ass. That's the way it was when I was a kid. Yeah. And then it reversed. And it's the kids. I haven't thought about it that way. Well, yes. They're, who, the, who are the woke? Yeah, well. They're not your age. No. Your age is Gen Z. I mean, Gen X. Yeah. That's the last sane generation. I agree. And you notice they never get involved in the generational wars. Like millennials always go after my people, the boomers. Somehow your generation just passes in between. Because what? I don't know. I'm trying to process that. I don't know if I... Well, do, you, do you ever hear about Gen X? I don't. I get, I'm not good with numbers. Okay. Gen well, X is what age is? You. I'm 51. You. It's you. So 51. You're Gen X. But it usually goes ben like 10 Stiller, years or something. Ben Stiller did the Gen X movie in 1994 called Reality Bites. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's Gen X. They came after the baby boomers. But they weren't the millennials, so okay. they hadn't like become completely crazy. I, I mean, I, okay, I got it. You know, and you're you're you're. More, I feel like you Gen Xers are more aligned with my with boomers, because you were especially alive, as we've gotten older. You you were you're a lot you were alive before the world went mad and went uh, to the phone. The phone is the portal to all evil. Amen. I agree a thousand percent. Yeah. No, it's just true. I agree a thousand percent. My life was so good to that fuck a fucking camera on a phone. Oh, that's what you have against it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's it's my personal gripe. But, I mean, you have, well, your kids are grown now, right? Yeah, my son's 29. Okay. <laughs> okay. So they're not like teenagers who are, uh, you know, going to be corrupted by the phone. But many. Oh, I have, I have nieces. Nieces. Yeah, they're were, 14. 14. 14 and ooh, 12 or something. Right. Well, I mean, it just, in every possible way, it made people stupider, greedier, um, faker. It's great for fakes. It makes you a fucking fake. Yep. The phone makes you a fucking fake. You can fake things, ghosting people. You know, like, yeah. they just, these kids, they don't want to. Fucking wanna... trolls. What? They're trolls. They call them trolls. People you're saying are ghosting people. They call them trolls on the internet. They're just trolling people. Fuck. No, I mean in your personal life when people ghost you. What's that mean? It means... <laughs> <laughs> well, Grandpa... This might be a generation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please here's explain the, here, to Papa. Here's the thing. <laughs> Ghosting is when somebody just uh, doesn't respond. To? And, uh, oh, no, I'm good. I'm okay. good. Those scenes when somebody doesn't respond. When you're like when you're texting back and forth, with somebody just like right and they ICG we call it. Just, yes, absolutely. Uh, yes, this is a common thing. The, people will just you know and stop responding, and I can sometimes change their information. I guess if you're a pest, but yeah, no explanation. Just just well, that kind of stuff I feel like is psychologically very damaging. To, I can't imagine social media shit with kids like it's trying to navigate those wires. And maybe I'm just old. Like, I don't like Elvis shaking his hips. You know, sometimes when I say shit, I'm like, am I that guy now? You know, well, I don't feel like that it. That is a very interesting question because it is a combination. You can't deny, yes, um, there is some level of us being unable to 
quite get something that is so native to younger people like social media and computers, which they grew up with, and I certainly didn't grow up with a computer. I didn't either. But there's also objectively, I mean, there's, you know, my truth and your truth is also the truth, <laughs> you know? And sometimes- I don't know anything else. Yeah. And it's just true that people used to read more. What a great name for a rapper, the what? truth. Isn't it been done? And I don't know any. There's no rapper named The Truth? Not that I know of. Wow. Hey, before this runs, go to GoDaddy.com <laughs> and get thetruth.com. I'm yeah. sure somebody has that. Somebody Somebody's must. got that. I, right. would, I would bet money on that. Well, what's oh, was isn't Trump's um, social media, what is it called? Uh, Truth Social. Oh, Truth Social. Well, Which that's, John, I'm, no, who came up with the best one? He should have called it. Uh, it was a celebrity. I thought it was a left-wing person or something, but somebody said they should have called it Trumpet. So I thought that was pretty creative. Much better. Because Truth Social, well, we won't, let's not get off on Trump. See, it's like a relationship. Like a, you know, a marriage. Like, you wouldn't fight. Two things you know nothing about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Educate me, Bill. <clears throat> well, I certainly know about relationships. I've had many relationships. Um, uh, that's how I got this Kid Rock hat. <laughs> No, um, but in a relationship, you learn early on, well, maybe not early on because people are on their best behavior early on, but at a, certain, true. at a certain point, you learn what other people's buttons are, right? What you're not going to agree on, you know, what not to bring up unless you want to have a fucking fight. Or not have sex. Right. You right. say tomato, I say fuck off. <laughs> right. Right. But, I, I agree with but you. But not everybody is a rock star who, if the person who is uh, embargoing their sex does that, they can't go somewhere else like you could. So Yes, yes, they can. Girls can always go somewhere else. Girls can. Not, always. Not guys. You're if a guy. If I wasn't Kid Rock, I couldn't. I That's mean, what for I'm the saying. love of God, I okay. look like Brad Armpit. Well, I'm glad you've argued your way right around to my point. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, is that you, if you're being embargoed, can do something about it. Most men, It also turns you into a big, giant asshole. What does? The next best thing. My way or the highway. You know, that, yes. that type of thing turns yes. into a giant asshole. Absolutely. Um, right. Why? Are you talking for a friend? <laughs> Asking for a friend. Is that correct or not? <laughs> Do you know a guy who did that? Oh, I, think, wow. I think we've all been that person at yeah. certain times in our life. Right. And some of us can step back and be like, yeah, I don't want to be that person. Yeah, but. And other people don't know what's going on until somebody fucking punches them in the face. Wait, Sometimes says, hey, man, you're being a fucking asshole. Look, I remember. In a relationship. I also. With the opposite sex. <laughs> <laughs> I When I was like. You know, earlier and very or much earlier in life, you know, when I was not doing very well and didn't know very much about women or how to get them or keep them or please them, or, you know, stuff like that, little things. You know, I remember like if I broke up with a girlfriend or was contemplating because I really, really wasn't someone who was well suited for me, the idea in my head was, <laughs> will I ever have another girlfriend? <laughs> Which is a terrible thought. <laughs> so it's like, maybe you're an I'm, honest man, Bill. What? <laughs> uh, you're an honest man. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, you know, I mean. I wonder if you'd still be this honest if you hadn't have been successful. <laughs> no, it would be, I'd be probably put a bullet past my tongue. But, <laughs> you know, but lots of people, I think, I certainly know that feeling. Like when you're in a relationship and it's like, maybe it's better because you have to learn to just accept things about the other person. Absolutely. You can't walk out because that's not a good alternative. Or, you know, you just legitimately love them and want to. But there's no two people, I think, who were ever married or very few who don't have things about each other that they have lost, just learned to go, you know what? It's, it's everything in life, isn't it? Probably. You mean accepting like that? Accepting. There's certain right. things like I start with death. I'm like, I will never get into a battle or a fight that I can't win. I cannot win that fight. So I'm gonna just try to do it as gracefully, as cool, as laid back as I can. And, you know, and I try to, I start there and then I just keep going down. 
well, not going down, <laughs> <laughs> rising above. Rising yeah. above. You're, there's stone, and I'm, my memory has been, I shot, rock and roll's not been kind to it. <laughs> this is like, do we need a you fucking. Know, I always wonder about the ears. No, because we use those in ears now. They call them. They're like so. Your your hearing is fine. Yeah, but so many years. I've lost a tiny bit of the top, but yeah. Wow. Overall, so many years of like playing. Wow. I mean, not, when you go to a concert, it's loud. Mm -hmm. It's always loud. But we don't hear that. You don't hear that because of what's in your ear. Yeah, they're like they're like mini headphones, really high tech ones. And they've had those since you started. No. So oh. I did. I did the early years with the big <laughs> big monitors and shit. Um. But, like, but these people have, you know, I know a lot of them. You do too. It's the, you know, it's the older, older generation of rock and rollers, man, who are out there with, you know, like Bob Seger still doesn't use in ears. He's got like five monitors in a circle around him, just blaring. He's your big hero, right? Yes. Yep. Because Detroit, and because just the kind of guy he is. Yes, not only that, but just obviously to start with his music. I'm a fan before oh, anything. Oh, yeah, of course. My parents were like, you know. He was, there's a picture in my house of Jesus and Bob Seger and Henry Ford, basically. Henry and, Ford? Yeah, my dad was a Ford guy. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure Henry Ford is one of those guys like Columbus. and. I everything. know where you're going to go with this. Well, I'm just saying I have made a lot of comedy, and it's something the woke don't like about me, making the point that we can't judge people in the past by the standards of the present. Oh, I, I loved you a bit on that when you oh, went, good. When you took it all back. Oh, yeah, yeah right. That was just recently. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you did see that. And, and you know what? They came after me so bad for being a racist. All I did <laughs> was give the facts about slavery. I know. That it was not something that Americans invented in 16. You traced it back to the Irish. You kept going. It was, it was everybody a, did it. Was, it was a human thing. It's a human thing. Unfortunately, humans are schmucks. And it's like, if I can make One you, person gets an earring, everyone gets an earring. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know that's a big, I mean, I hear that in your records. And I've heard, that is a big bug bear with you and I guess we were have that somewhat in common is that I don't think people understand that if you're not a racist and again there's been such mission creep on the word racist which you know to me always meant somebody who doesn't like black people and uh, doesn't want them to have equality well I don't think that's us of course there's more complications than that to ra racism in America but just that word you Fuck know, racism. I don't think people understand that when you're not a racist, to be called that is a giant insult. No. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> they call me whatever the fuck they want. I right. Just like, fuck you. Right. That's your brand. Yeah, just, That's like your Mac and Rose, you can't be serious. I'm playing Mac you're, tomorrow in Pickleball. Yours is fuck you. Yeah. Before anyone even attacks you, just like Chico. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and yet your life must be so good. I got the greatest bubble on earth. What do you mean? Bubble? Well, like Tucker was actually saying, he's like, you've created your own world here. What's your own world? It's just my home spaces, my friends. Oh, right. Like, sure, you know, of course. I, but I'm, the right. one that, I'm the one that's the fucking weird punk rock kid that I'm not into. It's like, I'm, right. I'm anti what everybody loves in my business. I'm the fucking outcast. Absolutely, you are. Yes. Like it's not. I'm not trying. Oh to be, no, no. But you'd be you'd be absolutely shocked at my fans. Like they are. I, and I'll just give you a quick example. We did these cruises for ten years. It was a big deal. And these two gay kids infiltrated the cruise. You can Google this. People listening can Google this. And there's Wait, an article you did on it. A cruise? Yeah, I did ten of them. They pay millions of dollars to take all your friends right. and favorite bands and have a ball. The only people that are scared of them, because we have a comedian every year, is comedians, because they think their career's over if they go on a cruise. I go, yeah, it's not that type of cruise. It's not the right. Disney cruise. Right. <laughs> but whatever. As, um, okay. Oh, well, what the fuck was that talking about? I, God damn. You, I knew it's contagious. a comedian who um, did his show on a cruise, and it was like for older people. And it was way too dirty. I forget what he said, but it like he offended everybody. And they helicopter him how <laughs> helicoptered him off the ship. That's a bad day as a comedian. They have jails on the ship. They have holding cells. Uh, yeah, yeah. A brig. Yeah. Well, you have to. What if someone you know what you know what happened? So these gay kids, I'm sorry, these gay <laughs> kids come on this cruise, right? 
<laughs> and they fucking, they're, they're coming, they're like, we wanted to go to Trump country and see what it was like. And they're going to write this piece article for some shit magazine nobody reads. <laughs> but their article's like, fucking like, we wanted to go on this cruise and fucking get in Trump land and fucking blah, 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 blah. And the whole article's like, we had the greatest times of our life. <laughs> These are the greatest <laughs> people on earth. These motherfuckers are just hardworking. You can right. call them rednecks, whatever. Right. Some of them work for military, you know, work for the Pentagon. Some of them yes. are principals at schools. Some are strippers, like whatever. Like right. these people just love to have a good time. They work hard to spend their money. It's, it's a fucking American dream. I remember reading some interview with you and you said, I'd rather have a stripper than a model. And I thought, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get me Kid Rock's number. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I agreed with what you were saying. Not that we can stereotype people, but models, you know, a little high strung usually and. Um, so string bean and high heels. Well, it's not that they're physically beautiful, but they, it, it, it just it seems to be more like anxiety and, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I think it, we call it drama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. I mean, it's like, it must be. I don't know, because Cindy Crawford's one of the most elegant, beautiful, kind, fun. Right. Rock and roll well, women I've ever met. But now she's, what, sexy? I, I okay, people change over. I, I mean, you want to become that when you're 60. Yeah, I don't know if she... She don't look like she's 60. Okay, I'm sure she does. I'm staying with them in Malibu right now. Okay. I see her all times of the day. She does not look like she's 60. Okay, <laughs> calm, she da is. <laughs> calm down. You're getting a little half chubby there. <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 no. She's... <laughs> no, I understand. Okay. She's like my sister. Okay, well-established. Cindy Crawford, hot mama. <laughs> I didn't say that. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> fucking media people, see? <laughs> I, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, it must be uh, when you're that beautiful and, and people, it's it's almost freakish, you know. how It's how, tough, trust me. How people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I get it. Uh, it's He's like, stop doing jokes. You're not a comedian. Oh, uh, no, I'm not. I'm always. <laughs> <laughs> you're I'm telling you, you, you're, you're, you have very funny songs that are also good songs. You also, I must say, are the best at evoking that kind of time of life that was carefree, you know? Yeah. I, mean, I can imagine cell phones nowadays, you know, having fun rock and roll moments, and, you know, crazy shit happening. Nobody's getting hurt, by well, the way. You know, like, I wouldn't let a girl on the tour bus if she had a boyfriend. Like, if, and like you know, one of those things, like, uh, they're all excited in the moment. Of course, like, why oh, my boyfriend you? said it was cool. I'm like, your boyfriend's here? Yeah, no. You're right. You either leave or tell him to come on the bus. Like, I never wanted to be in any of those fucking, I didn't want to be a fucking douchebag, because fucking trust me, if I wasn't fucking who I am, people could steal my girlfriend all day long. <laughs> you think? No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> well, that took a, that was really hard to break you down on that one, huh? <laughs> Well, this last article I read about you, you were living in Alabama, or at least they were on there for the Rolling Stone one. Yep. And you were with a woman. I remember there was a... We're still together. You're still together. 15 years. Wow. Yep. Not she married, likes to be, but... She likes to lay low and not be part of this bullshit, and she's smart for it. Yeah. And that was her decision. Wow. Not married, but together. Engaged. Engaged. Yep. Oh. So, so that you're going to have to... Engage bill is a thing before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you would know, wouldn't you? <laughs> so this will be four marriages? It'd be five. It'll be five. Before we're to the same chick. They were. were what? I just told you a few minutes ago, you stoner. Like I said, I married I Pam that, four I times. Did... I married her in the south of France, Beverly Hills, Nashville, and Detroit. I thought you were referring to four different women. No. So you like this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love this one. Oh, well, how does your new wife feel about that? That can't be a good harbinger. Everybody's friends, man. Really? <laughs> no. What do you mean new wife? Well, New fiancé? New fiancé. Uh, what does she feel about what? The woman you married four times. She's like, well done. But wouldn't that be something looming over her head? Like, if this guy's married this one no, woman? No, she ain't that type of chick at all. <laughs> yeah. She's into her horses, chickens, hunting. It's beautiful like can cook, like just loves the platonic relationship. Like That's another funny song you have about the breakup where it's like, and she's like, 
Oh, she's half, half your age old, and twice as hot. Twice as hot. <laughs> that, that, that was is, a that was a true one. That's mean, but you know when it's since we don't know who the person. Well, is. I was very upset at the time. Trust and me. We, and, we, and since we don't, I was know, very heartbroken. Since we don't know who the person <clears throat> is, it's it's you know everybody the, knows who the person was. That's Pam. Oh, that was I wrote that right after that when I got with this. I, I hooked up with this supermodel after beautiful Danish girl. We were an item. Oh, and she's a lovely girl. And oh. I was like, man, you don't go fucking with a songwriter. Well, that can, yes, that's <laughs> someone the, who writes words for a right. living. Like, don't get into a battle of wits with a comedian. Well, that like, adds you know, a whole new people that write words every day for a living. Don't fuck with them. That adds a whole new shade to that. <laughs> well, it's that, nothing like getting it from the horse's mouth. It's old news, Bill. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in my in my world. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm sure you're right. I'm sure I just, because I'm such an intellectual. No, I'm just talking to my world, my people that like enjoy my music, what I do, like that little circle. Like. No, I bet you that was widely known for among lots of Americans. But you know what? I can't be aware of everything. I have a lot. I've got to cover every week. I couldn't cover your revenge song. I, I love that song. It's funny. It never, why did it never occur to me? It's so obvious now. Because I guess I don't think of as Pam Anderson as old. It's not a revenge song. In this day, it was called a healing song. <laughs> Is that what you tell yourself, Bob? <laughs> in this day and age, I do. I'm on a journey. I can't go on my tour. I have to focus on my mental illness. It's like somebody punched this kid in the fucking face. Tommy's rich. He's good looking. Fucking go. You don't you do not mind twisting that tail, do you? No, not at all. I don't give a shit. Right. <laughs> right. Fuck this. It's not a no-brainer. Abortion. Right. Yes. Fucking like let the woman fucking choose and deal with God or the people. I told Republicans a long time, I'm like, get your fucking goddamn hand out of that cookie jar. Right. <laughs> like this, this is fucking well, I don't agree with it all. And what they you want to hear a weird one? So I just had the prime minister's right hand guy from Turkey. Come to my house in Nashville. The so, prime minister of Turkey. Turkey. Or Hungary. I'm sorry, Hungary. Hungary. I'm thinking of Or Orbit Erdogan. Orbit. Hungary, yes. Orbit's right hand guy, his top political advisor, came to my house in Nashville. And we were talking. He wanted to meet me. Tucker did a thing with him in Hungary, some right wing thing or something. And they were big fans of me. He happened to be in the States, blah, blah, blah. So come by for lunch. I go, because this is fucking weird and I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the Prime Minister's right, a guy from Hungary wants to have lunch with him. I'm like, yep. <laughs> Meanwhile, so, they're like, Saturday Night Live wants you to come. I'm like, no, nope, okay. I'm busy. So, so he comes over, but he says this about abortion. He goes, we just yeah. passed law. And you know, they're pretty right wing over there. You know the movement. I, I know you're educated. <laughs> let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I, I do. He, um, he said, we have more... Since Orban, you know, that you can get elected every four years there forever. And he's been like 12 years now. But he's like, since he's coming, like the family structure stronger. We do allow abortion, but we just passed a law, which this is pretty weird both ways. He goes, that before you have the abortion, we, the mother must hear the baby's heartbeat. And I was like, creepy and great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my mind went so many different directions. But because I, I thought, man, that's because if your mind's made up, you're going to do that. Like, that's like tormenting someone but at the same time that could be a fucking child walking on god's fucking it's, earth it's right a now. squishy issue i've always um i personally <laughs> was supposed to be aborted so i had a friend the same thing you His know mother told him it's not really informed i'm certainly pro-choice i'm i'm actually for postnatal abortion i would go to 10 years old i'm up, up i'm <laughs> keep I'm these up. kids in line like if you can abort your kid at six months you should be given to like 10 years old there are so many kids i would like to <laughs> when i just see them for a minute i'd like to abort them but no i believe in abortion up until the third trimester of high school <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. Are these jokes? I gotta you'll, come you'll, see you play. You'll like this special. You'll like. You're playing Detroit coming up. I yes. You know what? That's so funny. I'm in Detroit Saturday night. I'm in fucking Laughlin, Nevada. Wow. That's amazing. You say you're you're selling more tickets than ever. That's funny. ever. And it was. I I didn't know That's either because you know you're getting this polarizing thing and I'm this polarizing figure and yes I speak my mind they know where my politics are. Love Trump, blah, 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 start there. And then I put a little of that in my music. I do one interview and you know, everybody was scared on all sides because we had a deal worked out with Live Nation where it was a lot of money tonight. And I was eventually at the end, I said, nope, 
I'll take the back end. I'll take the tickets. I'll gamble on myself. Good for you. And I've done it my whole career. And thank the good Lord, I've been blessed and lucky and all those things, whatever you want to call it. And uh, boom, biggest tour of my career. But and financially, think- monetarily, you know, with attendance, we've, we've been shattering like Bruce Springsteen, Elton John attendance records in places like Houston and things like, which I... Yeah, it's just, it's just a, a similar, you know... And no one knows about it outside of my world. Because I'm not Ed Sheeran making because a they were, billion dollars. Also because the the liberal media would never report it. Not the good stuff, no. Well, they would never report something. Well, first they would never... Kid Rock's winning again. Right. New yeah. York Times. <laughs> Kid yeah. Rock wins again. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> not it's something you're not going to see. God, what, I should sell that you, t-shirt. Which is why I always say... There's one thing, I mean, every critic deserves their opinion. That's why they're a critic. But there's such a thing as being unprofessional, which is when you don't report what's, you know, what is relevant. Well, simple investigative journalism, yeah. a couple calls. I've, right. I've seen that. No. You've witnessed it more times. Than, I've witnessed it a ton. My, my uh, longtime excellent ratings are also a giant secret. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, let us not complain about our charmed lives. But I think it's fantastic. You can't complain. You're I would, single. You've never been married. You make fuck tons of money for a long fucking time. Right. You got a little piece of a fucking baseball team. You got nine houses on your uh, fucking I property. You've I just certainly smoke weed. don't do that. Like, how are you not winning? I certainly don't do that. Smoke a lot of weed? You, that's a big thing with you. I remember, so, so it's funny. You remember the night with Gregory Peck. I remember sitting with you, I think, at the Oscar party, like a Vanity Fair Oscar party. Some I went to a couple of those. Yes, I think that okay. And I remember you saying that same thing about like I'm winning. <laughs> and it of course is a theme that comes up. Charlie Sheen stole it from me. I love that. <laughs> uh, well, he didn't do it too well. But I I do love that sentiment in your 50 song about uh but your mom still thinks it's so cool. cool. I mean that it's very funny. It's self-deprecating, you know. The part that always There's, makes me choke up a little bit, believe it or not, in that funny-ass song is I still rock like a chair, middle finger in the air with my granddaughter on my knee. Yeah. And Uncle Cracker wrote that. He wrote that line, and I was like... Uncle Cracker. I remember that guy. Yeah. That What was that, your partner? Your, He's my your best like, friend. Still is. Still is your best friend. We came up together. He used to buy, like... He had a job, and his dad had a gas station, so when I was trying to, you know, do my shit in the hood and fucking blah, 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 and... Trying to make records, he would like save the money or ask his parents like to give us a loan to buy a drum machine or something. And he was just buy the cheeseburgers and cigarettes, you know. We were in my studio in my apartment with two young black children with a microphone hanging from the shower. Two <laughs> young black children. Yeah, my son's got uh, two, a brother and a sister f- from his mother, from a black man. And so I got some of their mixed, like so. At one point, when he was very young, we were all together. So how can they say you're a racist? <laughs> and you put T.I. on one of your songs. <laughs> Mary J. Blige is on that song. I love one of my favorites. Should really? I get to sing with fucking Aretha Franklin several times? Stevie Wonder? Like, fucking, I'm sure like, the people you work with don't think that. I mean, they know because they know you. Yes. And that's how you can go out to dinner with fucking George Clooney or people who, you know. Now... Sean Penn was my neighbor forever. Those were the greatest conversations on earth. Yeah. Me and him late night, the people who sat there and witnessed us fucking have right. a few cocktails and, you know, and fucking cut yes. it up. Yeah. Now, I mean, I know Sean very well, and, and uh, looking at you here, it's like I realized, yes, you two are kind of doppelgangers almost, yep. you know? Um, we had a blast with it. Oh, of course. Yeah. No. I think... Well, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, you think this country is going to have like a civil war? No, no, I think it's, I think the pendulum always swings. Like, it, I look at it like music, like when it's positive hip hop goes into like hardcore hip hop and then it comes back. And with so many things in life, like, are we in the 70s again, you know, and there was protests and this and blah, blah, blah. I know it was a different thing and you can never relate the past really to the future. You can try not to repeat it, but you can't line it up, you no. know, you no, can't you can. fit a square peg through a round hole. Right. And so, um, no, because I got some friends, you know, uh, proud boys on down who are like really rational people. And then some are like, let's fucking the go. Proud boys let's are... go to fucking war. 
Wait, again, they're both in the Proud Boys, you're saying? What's that? You're saying some of them are rational people and some of them want to go to war? Yeah, which I don't know if it's irrational or not. And I, I, I know one. But we really don't want won. to go to war. Of course we, not. Okay, so, so... That was Donald Trump's greatest feat. He kept us out of war. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, shots fired. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, yeah, we didn't have a war overseas. It's true. I mean, and great. I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll give him credit for that. Look, I gave him credit... Big time for moving the employment was an all time for high. Moving, Minorities were working more than others. okay. Moving the uh, <laughs> some of that is border was under control. <clears throat> sweetheart, I'm not the guy. I'm not straw man here. I'm not the guy who's ever going to argue um, that or, or or be that person. I who think just, it's good that Biden got fucking in, drug prices negotiated with fucking great. See, that's, that's what we need. right. Let's just not instinctively hate somebody because of who they are and what team they're on. I was going to say, I loved it when Trump moved the embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. I thought that was a great thing. That's weird. He, he was he was not wrong about NATO should pay more of the freight for the, their well, defense. Made people and, pay their fair share. You know, but, you know, okay, so let's not go into the minutiae of his policy. Um, well, you don't get to take a jab without letting me jab. Back. What was the jab? No, I'm saying, I thought you were going to go there. Oh. You're like, let me just say one last thing. Bob. Fuck I, Donald I, I mean, Trump. it's all out, you know. <laughs> I know, right. I know where every, you stand. He is everything wrong with a human being stuffed into one man. I disagree. Okay. I know you He's do. the greatest I, friend I, you I, could I, have, and he's the guy you want on the front lines okay, if you but have that's, to fight. Uh, friend is different than how he runs the job. But okay, okay. We, we're never going to agree, and that's okay. Because um, that's what we're, if any we if we have any message here on this PSA we're making for Let's America, go, Brandon. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by Kid Rock and Bill Maher and the Michael no, no, guy. No, <laughs> no, no, not let's go, Brandon. <laughs> hey, just doing a quick commercial in case you don't want to watch commercials. So meta. We have a subscription channel on Apple now called Club Random Velvet Rope, where you can get all the episodes ad free, most new episodes a week early, full exclusive bonus episodes, and extra bonus content where I talk about whatever the fuck I want. Try it free for a week now. Just search Club Random on Apple Podcasts. We are making a PSA here um, to just say to Americans, um, and it, we see it in so many places, people who are on opposite sides of this now just polarizing, like, political polarizing red and blue divide yep. have to stop shutting each other out. My editorial this week is about this idea of mingling, that we have these statistics that Americans are moving way less than they ever have before. Well, was this the one you did about no, fucking just, your boss? Or this is the no, that was I last week. Seen this. Okay. You're fucking with me. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Which is great. Oh, thank you. Props. Right. No, this one is coming up on Friday, and it's going to be about the idea that, you know, we don't move anymore. And one of the reasons people don't move is because they literally don't feel safe or comfortable moving to a part of the country can you imagine wearing a MAGA hat uh, on the subway in New York or wearing a pro-Biden T-shirt at a NASCAR rally? That's a bad place for us to be. <laughs> Sounds like a great TV show, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, I would go to one of your concerts. I would love to go to one of your concerts. You're welcome anytime. I know. And they wouldn't kill me, right? Oh. No. <laughs> That's what was funny about this. Sure? What's that positive? <laughs> Real? Yeah, no. You know the I cliche mean, of the greatest fans on earth. I, I, my fans are better than Jimmy Buffett fans. Wow, is that like some standard that I don't know about Jimmy, Jimmy Buffett? Do you don't know well, Jimmy Pat, Buffett? What do you live well, in a fucking cave? No, you I say know Jimmy you like Buffett. Music? You like the Eagles? I do. <laughs> I love. But I mean, Jimmy. I didn't know Jimmy Buffett's fans were known to be the great. Why? Because of the parrot head thing? Yes, they're fucking because just loyal, great, very and, loyal. Right? Yes. No, I love Jimmy Like NASCAR Buffett. fans. Yeah. NASCAR. Well, I mean, let's not even get on how silly it is to watch traffic, okay? I mean, if you if you find you that... You must love it. You live in fucking L.A. Uh, <laughs> we'll, be right, we'll be right back. <laughs> but the good thing is you get to do it at paying $7 a fucking gallon. <laughs> Oh, see, see that this is what I find. Thirteen five percent fucking see, sales tax. But see, for the Bob, this is what I find tedious. What's that? Is when people go right to like, 
oh, here's something I can get Biden on because Biden is that bad thing. So gas is $7, I'll get that dig in. It's like, you know very well, gas prices have nothing to do with who's president, mostly. Some things- I don't know that. Well, Enlighten some me. things. What? Enlighten me. I, I, I don't know that. Gas prices go up and down based on other factors in the world, not on who's president. president doesn't run the gas companies. He can change them slightly. The president creates policies that would influence the gas companies like any business. To a degree. Business. To a degree, to, yes. To, but why then? Over I understand the you don't want to drill because, like, enlighten me on this a little bit. And like maybe I can learn some. I don't know. Oh. Like you know, because of being energy independent, and and I know the news inflates Look, different things. But you seem to get the stats, and you get them pretty correctly. You have a team I, that obviously gets those, and they're wherever they're digging, they're they're yeah. on. Oh yeah, they're on. You don't you, and you don't twist them like most people do. I haven't done no. interviews in years and because I, there's I, always a gotcha moment. Absolutely, a headline. Right. Fucking for I the look, radio I, station for this for I that. Will, on your drilling point, let me let me concede this as I have on my show. It makes absolutely no sense to go under the theory that Saudi Arabian fossil fuels pollute the earth, but American fossil fuels don't. If They just don't pollute if, us. If you're not right, uh, I, <laughs> I wish we would be all green like tomorrow, but until that happens, I mean like Germany, Want, was very ambitious about going green, but they didn't reach the goal. So in other words, they threw the bathwater out with the baby. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> forget that analogy. What, what happened was they had to go back to nuclear yeah. because they had a shortfall. And I, know, like, I, know, look, I do know about I, this. I want us to get there, but until we get there, if we're gonna use energy, right, why not American energy as opposed to Saudi Arabian? It just seemed like a very backwards thing. So, like, no, I, 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 I will never like just go with my team. I don't have a team. I don't want one. I never have either. I, I definitely don't want I played your Barack team. Obama's inauguration. You did. Me and Kanye West actually were the first people to meet him as president. We were in a okay. room together. So here's something he mentioned his inauguration. Yep. Obama used to play a song, like he on big moments, like when he accepted the nomination, he played it a few other times. Oh, boy. Co what? Ah. Only boy. in America. James Brown? No, no, no. Brooks and Dunn. Yeah, well, you James know? Brown has living in America. That's different. You never Mom, heard but only you can see how I got it confused is my point. But, what, but you never heard Brooks and, I know I know Kicks Brooks well. You must I know, know that song. That's their biggest. Yes, of course. I'm living okay. in America. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you had me right until the last minute. I thought you were going to sing it. No, this is sun coming up over New York City. It's very country. It's I love this song. He used to play it because only in America. He used to say, only my story is possible in America. Uh, just without politics, all I know is I fucking love it. When Trump was playing the village people, oh. he's out there fucking yeah. cutting the rug. Fucking good shit. I think he missed his calling. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's... I, I, I do... Well, I don't... Okay, so, uh, like, here, there. Th this, to me, says a lot about how we see race in America, or don't see. Because I love that song. White people are good, black people are bad. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> see, the stick-up-their-ass people will object to me laughing there, and, you, of course, for you telling that. And my response is always, can't you just trust us? That well, trust me, that the headline, I can give you the headline, I was gonna be like, Bill Maher and Kid Rock's love affair. Like, you know, like, we'll try to, well, hopefully they turn it into some good shit. Maybe when you were young, Bob. <laughs> no, but okay, so only in America. <laughs> the lyric is, um, you know, because and I, I find it like so uplifting, you know, like when you feel down, you could play that song, They've you can dance to it. Brooks and Dunn. What? They've opened concerts for me. Oh, really? They were huge themselves for a long time. Oh, they're one of the greatest ever. Right. Ronnie okay. Dunn is a singing machine. Oh, it's a great, they have lots of songs I love. Anyway, but only Red in America. Red Dirt Road's my favorite. Is, and it's got a great electric guitar. And it's, I mean, it's only barely <clears throat> country, you know, but, and the theme is, of course, only in America. We all get a chance. Everybody gets it. It was like, boo, America. Everybody gets to dance. <laughs> Who's Boo America? Me? No, you sound like you're explaining. It's like living in America. No, no. It's like, you it's keep like, saying oh. living in America. I'm the one who's stoned, but you keep saying living in America. This is... <laughs>
It's a difference only, so, in, America. only in America. Okay. So, and that's the theme. Like, we all get a chance. Everybody gets to dance. You know, we dream in red, white, and blue. If you're in the mood, it's just perfect. Okay. I'm always in that mood. But there is, I know you are. Okay. I'm not always in that mood, but I will get in that mood when I go see you. And I can get in that mood, and it's a good mood. And I, your songs take me there. They really do. Thank you. Especially like the ones that are like very personal about, you know, when you're a kid and you're drinking beer, even though I didn't drink beer, but I get what you mean. And the girl is on your shoulders and all that stuff. It's almost like it makes me like uh, get very, you know, oh gosh, those days are gone <laughs> by a long shot. Nostalgia, baby. Anyway, the lyric is um, something like, um, you know what? They keep... Only in America. There's no, only no. in America. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong again. My my partner, ladies and gentlemen. You do a ventriloquist act. You can get on my knee, Bob. I'll Bobby. be your Ed man. Oh, please, ladies and gentlemen. He doesn't mean it. He wasn't educated. <laughs> <laughs> no. Bobby, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> He's terrible, ladies and gentlemen. Tell the nice people you're sorry, Bobby. I'm very sorry, ladies and gentlemen. See, there it is. He's a sorry. What a great evening it is tonight. <laughs> He's a sorry puppet. I've always said that. All right, so here's the lyric. It's something like um, one, <laughs> one kid uh, dreams of fame and fortune. One kid helps pay the rent. One might grow up, one might wind up going to prison. One might just be president. Only in America. Okay. I'm in. So, Sold. That's true. But you also have to admit that certainly historically, that ratio of likely to go to prison or become president was heavily slated toward the white people for the president part and the prison for the black people part. Now, things have changed a lot. Are I, you saying we should send Barack Obama to prison? No, I, <laughs> no I'm not. Oh, I'm I thought just we were... saying, you know, now the woke, one of the big you know, like issues I have with them is they will not concede the amount of change that has taken place in certainly the last, especially five years, but 10 years, and all through history, so, not to say we're done work, there must, progress must be made. Of course, oh, well, that's my worst of fucking course. thing I hear from anybody doing well, a charity just, this, a sports fucking player who can't fucking hold an interview down. Like, well, you know, we do a lot, it's just not enough. It's just so, te it's just so tedious to always have to interrupt an adult conversation to appease the people who need to hear things that we just take for granted. Yes, there is more work to be done. We get it. Yes, Black Lives Matter. I heard you say that in one of your songs. and like Yeah, and then after I said, no shit, motherfucker. Right, right. no shit. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Right. <laughs> That's... Hey, Black Lives Matter. Right. Oh, wait, we need to have a science class on this. Uh, fucking get to the bottom of, like, yeah, of course. But anyway. How's that working out for The, the point of <laughs> my dissertation on the song Only in America is that, that, yes. Did they say Black Lives Matter in that? No. It Let's was Go Brandon? Way, no, no. It was way before. <laughs> Stop it. And, uh, but that to me is the blind, little blind spot with the Republicans. Is that, that they th That they think that one might grow up to be go to prison, one might grow to be president, that just because that yeah, te technically and legally that's still possible, and it's way more like even-handed than it ever was, but there still is a large historical weight toward, again, one of those groups. So you're... <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's like 44 to one. So there has been, that is a little bit of a victory. 45 to one? <laughs> Are we up to 46? Is uh, Biden I just like 45. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you think he'll be 47. <laughs> yeah. So you've been to the White House. Is it fun? Must be a Fuck kick. It. Well, it was a lot. I've been there with all the presidents since I've been a lot, except Reagan. Um, really? You were there for, like, um, Clinton, Obama, yep. Bush? Because I always did those Kennedy Center honors. You, you like, as a tribute to somebody? Yeah, I've done Led Zeppelin. Because I, frankly... Uh, Elton John... Wow. Um, Merle Haggard. Wow. Um, they used to call me for these things. And then I was like, I love Trump. They're like, lose his right. fucking number. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Literally. I've and gotten that, shit every day. And, that, and that's what has to stop. That's what has to stop. This, 
And that's what's going on. It's there's a lot of you don't get to sit at our lunch table. Right. And I know you don't care about you have your own lunch table. I have my own lunch table. It's just it's just a bad attitude. It's just gross. It's a shitty it's way just, to live life. Sh- exactly. Just a shitty way to live life. You know? It yeah. is, man. I have more fun with some of my people that think friends, family, and fun, well, whatever. They think differently. Like, just like, okay, you, you're not going to cry, right? All right, then let's fucking go. <laughs> and let's have fun around a campfire, <laughs> drink some beers, and like, hey, I'll give you a fucking hug at the end of the night. Like, it's like hockey. <laughs> like, let's fucking get on with it, man. There's too much. Like you said, we're t- trying to kill some time well, before we fucking die. Right. And I, I don't I don't understand a young generation that seems to be so, if not anti-fun, anxious about fun. Like, sex makes them anxious. I mean, I was anxious. Who doesn't get anxious I? about fucking sex? <laughs> no, I know, but anxious enough. Who sits there like, no, my but have sex for no, <laughs> no. I mean, I was anxious, but like in a, I feel like a healthy, horny way. Like I was just like, <laughs> like a masturbating machine when I was thirteen and fourteen, with not getting anything, but just like masturbating furiously. But at least I had a singular goal. I knew what I was going <clears throat> after. I knew what I wanted. It was just I was shy, so it wasn't happening. Yeah, when did fame overtake pussy? What do you mean? So I think there's some kids out there who'd rather be famous and get some pussy. Absolutely. Well, there's, I mean, you I know, think you just described that. Well, we can run back the tape, but I'm like, that's no, no. what I gather from that. I'm <laughs> no, like, it's, yeah, it's, like, it's, when you're young and oh, everything abso- starts working, you're like, oh, God damn it, my fucking there's... chorus teacher looks hot. Ma- <laughs> See, you know, you and I, I think, have the same high libido. Like, I think this is a very underreported thing about humans is that we have very varying levels of libido. So for you and me, we can't imagine something being more important than, as you say, pussy. You, you're so you're so crude, Kid I Rock. That's I, called I, I despise a, you. I think that's called being a guy. Well, but it's not. See, that's the thing. It's being a certain kind of guy. Like Bill Clinton is that guy. I mean, I could name lots of guys like that. Well, they're, name me the ones who aren't. They're called dogs. You could probably get that. So right many. Last you, just, you just don't hang with them. There's many, many, many. Okay, my libido is okay, not okay. like fucking like but here's going a, for any cause. It's like, I mean, of course, when you're young and you have the opportunities, but as you, you're you like. Like what? Uh, a qual- well, quality, not quantity. Right, absolutely. But still quantity also. I mean, but. Well, you know. My grandpa used to say everything in moderation, <laughs> including moderation. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's, that's great. Yeah. Well, do you got was, people here? What was the point? Of oh, that? I got one left. Libi- yeah. Libido. That's. Fucking. Now, what's his you name? You really do like beer. Yeah. I mean, I really don't like beer, but that when, doesn't surprise you, me. You're when, a Democrat. When you sing, <laughs> I'm not a Democrat. I'm never going to. Uh, announced for a party, although I certainly have caucused with the Democrats. How much money much have you given more. the Democrats? Two billion dollars. Ask me how much I've well, given I, ask me how much I've given Republicans. Nothing. Four million. Really? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm good at fishing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, the first time I did it because I thought it was very, very, very important that that the, was Obama, right? The first black president be reelected. I thought that that was even <laughs> even more important than elected, because otherwise, uh, too many people would be like, "Well, we tried a black president, and obviously that didn't work out." I always said, I, "Man, I want to hang out with Obama and drink beer." I mean, there's not a cooler and you know, all the presidents that I've been, you know, yeah, able to meet from Jimmy Carter up, and it'd be like, cool. Are just you got to be charismatic, like, obviously. You think he can't get down? Right. Oh, he I can get promise down. you. Like, yeah. I want to drink beer with him. I didn't like a lot of his policies, this, that, and the other. I didn't vote for him. I was invited by MTV, like, because they wanted to show a diversity back then. They're like, we need a right wing guy who's got a fucking song or two. <laughs> They're like, it's Kid Rock doing I was supposed to go do George W. Bush's homecoming, like, back to Waco. And they dug up, like, they vetted some shit where I did say some crazy shit about Barbara Bush, like, on an early record when I was 17 years old, right? So they they found that, un, they were like, basically, you can't come. Very nicely, whatever was done. 
Like, you know, like, oh, we're busy. We're not doing the party tonight. No one's coming. No one RSVP'd. Like, none of that shit. So MTV calls, like, hey, would you play? I'm like, of course I would. Can I bring my son? My son's mixed. I'm like, it's a big deal. You know? I, it's a big deal for me, too. I'm like, fucking hope this motherfucker gets it right because I ain't voted for him. But, and then we're going, we're, we're there, we perform. It was great. And they grabbed me and Kanye West and they're like, um, hey, it's time to meet the president and first lady. I'm like, Junior, come on. And they're like, no, no, he can't come. Just you guys, you know, Secret Service is all. Burp, burp, burp. And fucking, I'm like, fucking follow us. Go in there. Hey, Kanye, you're standing around. Uh, Michelle looked beautiful. Barack kills a cucumber in a bowl of hot sauce. It's like, we say hello. He's like, tell me what's going on, Rock. What's going on? I'm like, I'll tell you what's going on. I go, hey, my son sitting out the door who's mixed. His mother's black. I'm like, kind of big deal. Like, you know, if, you, if you'd like to say hi to him for a second or whatever. So he's like, sure, bring him in. I look at the Secret Service guy. I'm like, fuck you. No, we <laughs> 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 this is how guys talk, by the way. It's fucking fun. Why should we sit here with handcuffs on and you have know, a conversation? I, like, don't I, say this, don't say that. Sweetheart, you're talking to preaching to the converted. You know, I've been. You I, just call me sweetheart, see? I've been, <laughs> That's probably I've the been, best jab you could get. I've been, <laughs> I've, been, I've been sitting in these chairs or any of these chairs in this room for 20 years doing this. I just recently you know, made it a podcast, but like, this is, you know. Does that suck having to like, you know, get celebrities, people of. No, but you know what's. Cause you got, cause they're like, I'm like, you know, the TV like, show. Would, would, <laughs> would you and I, some of you, somebody I've been, love to have gotten to know and have a drink with. Would we have ever done this if there wasn't a business reason to do it? If that's how people are, like you oh, and I I'm are. I'm a capitalist, I'm with you. We, no, but we do things when there's like that kind of, reason to do it otherwise like it would just be so weird hey <laughs> bob it's i'll give you this you got balls to do it because it at this point it's not about money not at all i get it no trust me i'm right there with it. i got I, my jet has two middle fingers on the tail right i get it <laughs> again yeah but this is probably one of the mo more important podcasts you've done because i am not on your side politically. Correct. This, that, and the other, and we can, but we, can we can maybe, maybe, maybe it gets a little contagious where people are like, I've lost, I'm not gonna say their names, I've lost two friends because of like Trump. They weren't friends. They were. Not, not really good, close not, friends. Not good say. ones. That's, I cannot accept that. And that's your friends. And you sound really, like one of my boys in the hood. No, I cannot accept like, that. Fuck them. Like, I, that they is were not never your friend. friend. They were never were. It's like, that, man, it's, this is some history. I'm not going to get into it, but it's it's arrogant. You know, I put in this piece I'm doing Friday about how America needs to mingle more it, with and like you know, like I said, we don't people don't move because they were literally afraid to be in a part of the country that isn't their political tribe. And well, come uh, hang with me in Alabama. I've I'd been Al it. I've been Alabama. I mean. What I don't you do. You've been to rural Alabama. Me and Hank no, Jr. No, 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 no. And there's no need. class people, black, white, fucking all that shit. Like, no. they're all poor together. They work their asses no. off and they fucking, they will never move out of there. No, Bob, I have never been to rural Alabama and there's no reason for you to ever go. Well, I just I, invited you. I know, I, I love that. But at my age, I'm just not going to go to a, a ranch or something in the middle of nowhere. No, I can't go to, uh, but I have played. Birmingham, I played Mobile. It's they're great. Yeah, I'm it's, twenty. I'm thirty minutes from no, from Montgomery. You said Mobile. Mobile. Oh. oh, Montgomery. I may have played Montgomery. You're thirty minutes. Well, yeah. You know what? I'll take that back. If I was in, if I'm playing Montgomery, Alabama, which is possible, that's a they got a theater. What do you charge tonight? What do I charge? You can tell me you off the get record. It, you get in free. I'll, no, I'll no, no, no. I mean for your shows. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean. I might book you and put you on my deck. Probably like, <laughs> I don't know, 50 to 100 or something like that. Maybe That's there's it? Some, maybe there's some expensive receipts. Expensive. That's it? What should I be charging, a million dollars? Well, you're playing the Fox Theater in Detroit, correct? Correct. That's 5,000 seats. Yeah, so? So you got to be walking out of there with 300 grand. Well. <laughs> I can do that math. A guy's got to eat. There's also. Uh, there's no, no, you should. No. 
I mean, don't feel bad yes. about it. No, I mean, outside I, of I being, don't feel bad at all. Outside I love, of I, that, outside of your white privilege, don't I, feel too bad I, about I, it. I, <laughs> I love money, and I wouldn't drive an Uber if I didn't. I mean, I get all I can, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm a big defender of. How long's your contract with HBO? Forever. It's like it with, is. It's like with the devil. I was gonna say because you could fucking just cancel that. Why? Do that show you just said. What show? Ah, fuck, I just forgot. Run that tape back. You just said something like, that's your new TV show. I think it's so interesting that I'm older and stoneder, and you forget what you're saying as much as I do. I'm in a band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and you're on tour now. I mean, you, you're... Just finishing. You're just finishing. So what? what is... I'm very curious what touring is like now at 50. I fly in 40 minutes before the show, go over set list, warm my voice up, go on. I have them play a little bit so I can get in the car with the cops and get to the plane and get home. 40 minutes. You arrive 40 minutes before the show? Yes. I, I don't... And I'm gone off the stage. I, I, mean, I tried to hang around a couple nights. It's just fucking pictures. It's just a fucking life's a oh, picture. What? And my biggest song is called Picture. Right. <laughs> Well, what, I mean, especially a rock star. I mean, you would have to take thousands and thousands of pictures. And then what are you going to do? Unless someone's like, I bought all your fucking Elvis, you take well, a picture. Well, no, that's why you have to do the Elvis exit. You have to be Elvis has left the building. That's exactly what I right. do. No, no. I, I get it. I mean, I also fly in. I, I always do two cities, but I only stay over one night, go to the second city, and leave right after the show. Yep. After the second. That's, that's the only way at my age it works for me. It's awesome being rich. It's awesome being rich. <laughs> it just is. And it is. Can you imagine what, if, they out, if they banned, like you heard the talk in France, right? That they might ban private jets. Because you know what's after that is LA. And I would be in Nashville like, ah, fuck all you motherfuckers. Well, I mean, my, I, not that, you know, at this point I really need to justify it because like I always You're flying say, private like, to well, your Well, like gigs. I always say, the only people who don't fly private are those who can't. Anyone who can is seduced by it. Every fucking environmentalist does it. Uh, my thing is, if you're not going to be serious about f climate change, then just don't fucking come after me for this. Because because I tried. I had the first Prius. I had the first... Uh, that had a parachute in it, didn't it? A parachute? Oh, you're talking about the Prius car? Yeah. <laughs> you know... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying. I was. Try, I was. I had the first. You drive around a Prius. I was trying to set an example. You might get beat up in Detroit if you roll around a Prius. He can make sense of that, right? Yes, of course, <laughs> because it's not made. In Detroit, or maybe it is. Prius no. is a ver no. Prius is not made in Detroit. Where is it made? What the is, only electric it, car being made in Detroit right now is Rivian. And I like their actually, their trucks and their SUVs. You keep up with the with the uh, Detroit. Market? Like I, keep up car? With, I keep up with the stock market, believe No, but about. like the cars and like you I'm a car about, guy, yeah. yeah. Not Jay Leno level. So but. You, you know who we should get together with? Because it's perfect for what we're saying about bringing the country together. And he's another Michigan guy. <clears throat> and he's one of my best friends. Oh, Michael Moore. Please. Oh, that motherfucker. Come on, man. Why? No, I, I would. We, I'd get together with anybody. There's a... That's what I said. Stevie Wonder invited me and Kanye West to go on an African Enlightenment trip a few years ago at a uh, Grammy after party. And I was like, fuck yeah. It's the weirdest shit I ever fucking heard. Let's go to Africa. Stevie fucking Wonder. It never happened, but it aligns with what you're saying. Yeah, Michael Moore, like, yeah, yeah like, fuck, I hate all. I like, uh, I like that one movie about the fat people. I remember years ago, I walked into toy restaurant. He also is from Flint, Michigan, Grand Funk Railroad. Well, I would Stevie Wonder is born in Saginaw, Michigan. Brag about that. But <laughs> Well, I no, mean, they're opening my concerts. Grand Funk Railroad? Yeah. We're uh, an American band. I don't need a lot of money. You what? know who wrote that? It was a black know. group called the Soul Brothers Six. Is that their other hit? Yeah. What? Some Kind of Wonderful. Some Kind uh, of Wonderful. That's Grand Funk Railroad? No. Yes. They made the hit out of it. Really? This was like Pat Boone doing a Are you sure? Oh, fuck it. I'll, it bet, you, be. I'll bet you this fucking No, I'm sure, you're right. I'm sure you're right. They opened for you. Yeah. But that's, but their big one was, we're an American band, right? I like that. That one. and the, I'm your captain. Everybody listen to me and return me 
my ship. See, your, your songs always have energy. I remember when, I remember hearing you one day in an interview, um, again, always making friends, Bob. I remember you saying something like, uh, I think you were talking about Radiohead. And oh, you, yeah, I don't you, get that. You were, it, <laughs> and you were, like, I'm not, you were like, I'm not putting it down. I'm not putting it down. But, and I thought, again, I thought, I feel the exact the same way. Uh, a creep, I like, like that. kid's like, uh, right, creep. I the like only that normal s- song to make the rest is he's like, he's like over a I, drum machine. Like, he's like, and everyone's like, he's a fucking genius. I I'm like, that fucking kid don't right. know what the fuck he's doing. I program <laughs> drum machines. <laughs> I, I, I just don't get it. But there's lots of, you know, types of music and types of things that people like. Absolutely. And I just don't. And that's fine. Whatever blows your dress up. Exactly. You know? I, mean, I fucking agree a thousand percent. I know. I know you do. What's fun, though, is to get in a conversation and enlighten somebody. I'm, right. I'm not, not on, like, politics or any shit like that, but in understanding, like, I could I could play some music right now that would blow your fucking mind. Like, you'd be like, no way. Steve Miller didn't write that. I could play this blind black guy, Paul Pina, playing Jetliner. It's probably right there with Sweet Home Alabama and Love book. Jetliner. Like, boy, but this version, fucking, I'll turn you on to it before I before I leave. Um, yeah, shit like that. Like, hey, let's do that shit. Send me your playlist. That's not gay. No, <laughs> two guys sharing a playlist. No, that's fine. I I've will. got a mixtape I want to give you before you go. No, um, listen. Thank you for that thing. That's an awesome. That's Mike Lindell, sir. Oh, I know who exactly who it is. Well, don't call him a thing, all right? <laughs> well, that he's a person. That's a thing. I mean, he's a man. There's going to be a report on. He smoked crack and now he sells pillows and he makes millions of dollars. Okay, I'm just going to say there's going to be a report on him someday, and I guarantee it will include the phrase "urine soaked." I don't know him. He's. Okay. I know he's tried to get at me. He, he was. Right. He was actually good friends with one of Bob Seger's players who passed right. away recently. A good friend of mine. Um, Alto Reed and um, but isn't you, you wouldn't have him for dinner? Absolutely. Well, right. di- no, <laughs> You're no, like, yes, well, no, not dinner. I'd have. Him for dinner. I, I mean, I might. I, but that's not because if it's Mike Lindell, I'd have him like here. I'd love to have him here. Can you get him here? I'd love to have, have Mike. That Lind- would. I got the what? The camera's on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if you, but like, I would absolutely love to talk to Mike Lindell. This, he doesn't really, he stays out of the media. I understand. He stays out of the media. Like I know, me. but, 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 he the, stays I, out of the media the, like <laughs> me. But the, <laughs> but the question was. Don't fucking agree with me. I'm making a joke. The question is, he what, doesn't like, you know, I, to be on camera, he stays out of the media a little bit. <laughs> I, darling, I understand okay. what you're Is that point. not let, just that not good not, of a joke? Let's not fight. <laughs> hey, do you have people I, that can grab me another beer? Oh, uh, no, I got to go. Hey, guy. Oh, I have to. Uh, great talking to you. I, <laughs> it's been two hours. It is? I, I could do it for another two hours, I swear to God. <laughs> um, I hope we keep in touch. Oh, are we going to hug? Hey, you're a big bro, guy. Fucking <laughs> 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 <Okay>, goddamn. <laughs> See, we, we laugh. That was good. Club.